So when you're first learning how to play this game for speedrunning purposes, the launches are actually nice because they increase in difficulty. Um, so it's really, really easy to be able to progressively learn. Um, with launching and such, probably the best thing to use are the plateau trees. The reason why the plateau trees are so nice is because they're the hardest trees in the game to use for launching, or some of the hardest. And so I always recommend people start there. So you can take these trees here in the Great Plateau, or right next to the old man's hut. Um, and what you do is you start with just a basic, like, vertical or horizontal tree launch. So you knock the tree down, move it a little bit to the side, if it'll move. Stasis. Get on it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's the first launch you want to go with. Alright. Sup, Potato Man with Twitch Prime Sub. Thanks so much, man. Appreciate it. If you can get that launch five times in a row without any mistakes, then you can move on to the next launch, which is the rocket launch. Rocket launch is more difficult because you have to stasis the tree in midair. The way you do that is you just do a spin to win, and right as you hit the tree, you press B. So you're still holding Y, and then as soon as you hit the tree, you press B while holding Y. The way that I do it is you'll see I literally just take my finger, and then I move my thumb down. So I'm holding Y, press, down with my same 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 finger. So just boop, like that, while holding Y. Boop. And so what you do with that, with that is the moment you hit the tree, the moment you hear the tonk of the axe hitting the tree, you cancel it and you immediately pull out your stasis button. So you see me do that here. And then shoot up, jump, climb, look up to reduce lag, and then boom, there's your launch. If you can get that five times in a row, then you can move on to the next launch, which will probably, for me, be the horizontal height launch. Actually, rather, no. It would be just a, a typical height launch. So, in this case, for the height launch, we actually can't use these trees. We would have to move on to different trees, which would be... Where are good height launch trees? Over here, next to Magnesis. Why do you fall off the tree when it launches? Because you're not looking in the air. It, you have to look up to the sky while you're holding onto the tree to reduce the lag. Um, sometimes that doesn't even work. Um, bottom line is, if the game lags too much, it'll actually reset Link's location and cause him to let go of the tree. There are some areas that you do launches that, in some situations, it really doesn't matter how much you look up in the sky. The lag is still too strong. So here are the trees that we're going to be doing typical height launches with. Nothing special about these trees. Uh, only difference is, is that these trees fall in a certain way. that make it a little bit easier to do height launches with. So the height launch essentially is you want to get the tree so that's at a 45 degree angle. And then you're going to walk up it and you're going to jump on seven. Again, you always jump on seven. So you hear the do 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 and then launch. That do 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 is what speedrunners use to count their jump. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then on that seven, you jump. So you'll you can count with me. 
So I go, hit. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. See, that one didn't go because of lag. So let me try looking up this time. See, that's what happens when you don't look up. I'm gonna do it looking up this time. Double axe of damage, let's try a different. Oh, it worked, but I died. But you notice how it worked that time because I was looking up. So yeah, that's how you can tell that lag fails your launches. Is when Link just kind of like glitches in place and doesn't really go anywhere. So yeah, I actually want to go back to those trees because I want to show a little bit more about those. And so with the horizontal tree launches, again, you want to make sure that the tree isn't so high as to the point that you can't climb up it. Because if you just grab onto it or you slide off, obviously you failed. Um, a lot of people ask me the reason why we do horizontal la height launches. The reason being is because sometimes we don't want to just go forward. We want to go a little bit up as well. Um, the distance is a little bit better that way. So I'll give you an example. Um, I'm actually going to make it daytime. just in time. So sometimes we want to go more than just forward. We want to go up and forward. So like, I'll give you the contrast between the two. Let's say I want to head over to that tower. Okay. It's too far to rock it. Like I can even show you a rocket launch. See? This is where we started, this is where we are, this is our objective. It's too far. Can't rocket launch. And then if we just do a normal launch, we get a similar result. Same distance. Doesn't make it there. Let's try now with a height launch, a tree height launch, and see if it gives us a different result. See, even with some areas, the lag reduction isn't enough. The game just lags too much. This is something you see a whole lot less on the Switch. Just for some reason, it doesn't lag as much. Uh, it's one of the ways that Switch is actually superior. We 
we get the launch. Oh, look at that. We made it. We made it to our destination. Just like that. So that's one of the reasons why you would use a height launch with a tree. Would be to make it places where you don't need to go as high and there's stuff in the way or it's at the same plane level or even a higher level than you are, like a higher elevation. So height launches are used quite frequently in, in runs. Now, if I were trying to say get to the back to the top of the Great Plateau, obviously I'd be using just your standard rocket launch. That might not even be high enough. Oh yeah, I made it. So yeah, if you want to get like up really, really high distances, then yeah, rocket launches are your are your friend. Does the number of hits with the weapon matter, or just as many as you can manage in the time you have? So, one thing I will tell you, and this comes with a little bit of practice, um, you get in the habit of turning around when you do a launch. So I'm going to show you the difference in me starting my spin to win backwards and starting my spin to win forward. Watch how, let's count how many hits it takes for me to start forward. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven hits when I'm facing forward to get it to go red. All right, let's start facing backwards. All right, same thing, only well, I'm gonna face backwards. One, two, three, four. Oh, look at that. It took almost half the hits. There have been people who have given reasons behind this. Honestly, we don't know 100% why. It's the same thing when you do like a spin to win on a Talus or a spin to win on a Hinox or anything, you always wanna start looking backwards. So you start looking backwards and then as you're going, you come back to it. So, and you'll see me do that a lot in runs is I'll look backwards and then I'll move Link towards him, towards the objective again. So that's a height launch. I'm gonna break it down a little bit more for you. So again, you start with the hit, cancel, pull out your stasis and stasis it at a 45 degree angle. Give you an example of doing it too high. Watch what happens. Bada bing, bada boom. Let's climb this bad boy now. Oh, actually worked. That one actually worked. But if it's too high, you'll slide off. For some reason, he didn't slide off. But I guarantee you in an actual run, he will slide off. So that is actually an example of it being too high. If it's too low... You won't get the height you desire. And sometimes you won't even launch. Sometimes the lag will be too much that it just won't even launch in. So you wanna make sure that it's not too low either. You're looking for a 45 degree angle. Just right like that. That would be your perfect height. It's enough that Link can climb, stand on it, no issues. That's usually what you're looking for in, in your launches. Now, if you're doing a horizontal height launch, which I'm gonna to get to in a second, then you want it lower. 
horizontal height launch is a height launch with the tree that isn't like this one where you can't run up to the top and then jump off the front. Uh, I'll give you an example of a tree that you can horizontal high launch of. Actually, there are a couple over here. Okay, so we have these trees. Now, you're looking at these trees. How do you height launch off of these? Because I mean, look at these. Look at the look at the tops. How do you how do you jump off the top? Like I mean, look at this. I'm not even gonna wind up. Look at this. It's ridiculous. I mean, you could do it, but... They're like impossible. You don't even know where the tip is, because it's showing it, because it, it still shows the top part of it. So you don't even know where it ends. So it's likely as you'll walk up, you want to get to the tip, but... Whoops. Invisible end. So, you could either learn where the tip is, or you can do what a lot of runners do, and they do what's called a horizontal height launch. What a horizontal height launch is, is it basically applies the same principles as a height launch, only it does it sideways. So, what I'm going to do is, this is my destination by the way, let's say I want to go here. There's a Korok over there. See that? There's a Korok right here. So that's my destination. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the tree this way, and then I'm going to shoot it up like this. And then I'm going to get on the side of it. So you'll see, watch. Like that. Hit like that. And launch like that. That's a mark. That's how you do it. So a lot of runners will do that instead. Or they'll launch it that way. And it actually helps a lot. with doing launches with really weird trees, like these ones. <laughs> that one worked, and I died. So that's a really, really hard version of doing height launches, and again, it just depends on the trees you have. There are a lot of situations in 100% where you don't have good trees to do launches off of, so you have to use those instead. Um, same thing works with like pebbles and stuff. It's the same principle. You can even do it with this tree too. Like I can do the same thing with this tree if I wanted to. Say, just make it a lower. Say. And again, the reason why height launches are so desirable is because of how much distance you get off of them. And so, if you can get these kind of height launches, and if you can get normal height launches like five times in a row, then you're good to move on. Um, if you're going to move on to another launch. If you're going to move on to another launch, a launch that I would suggest you doing is doing the same kinds of launches you just saw me do here, only with different kinds of trees. For instance, doing a launch like a, a rocket launch with that tree is very different than doing a rocket launch with this tree because the rate that the tree falls is different. Um, the dead zone for the tree is different. Now, what do I mean by the dead zone of the tree? Watch this. I'm gonna stay sit and I'm gonna stop it there. See how far it goes. Oh, yeah, sure what. Trees have dead zones, basically. And what that means is if you stasis it too early, it doesn't go anywhere. I'm actually not sure about the dead zone of these trees, but we'll see. See how far it goes. See if I hit a dead zone. Yep, there it is. So you see, I. I chopped the tree down and I stasis it, but I was still within the dead zone of the tree. It didn't have enough time to disconnect from the actual stump 
so it didn't go anywhere. And every tree has a different dead zone. Come on. Oh, this is the wrong axe. Oh, that still goes. That's crazy. So you see these ones have a much more lenient dead zone than that one did. So every tree is different. So you want to make sure that you're stasising them with a little bit of hesitancy. Um, also some trees you're required to wait a little bit before you stasis it. So yeah, you want to make sure that you're waiting a little bit, especially when you're doing like rockets. You can even do this sideways rocket, which I think is easier for like climbing onto. So you, it's really fun to just like play around with the w different ways that you can launch off of trees. Um, tree launches are essential in 100% and still very, very important in other categories as well. Um, and then once you get into those, I would say move on to like maybe odd objects. non-conventional objects you know things like boulders things like you know boxes things like this you know try doing launches off of these sort of things okay so with something like this be careful this is a high lag area it might not even work what you want to do with these is you want to hit them and then you'll get on it after you shoot it at an angle, get to the back and jump on seven. Again, always jump on seven. So. Shoot up. Oh. Jump on seven. And that gets you a decent launch. Okay, so those are boxes. Um, boulders are tricky. With boulders, the thing that I found that works the best is practice. Because every boulder is different, and like the angles of the boulder are unique. Um, pebbles. Pebbles are an item that you would do well to really, really practice. Um, because pebbles you use a lot in 100%, you use them in other categories quite a bit. They're getting integrated into. Um, it wasn't until after Juan T started integrating pebble, pebbles into his runs that people realized their worth. So like for instance, we'll take this pebble right here. And then pebbles are where you start getting into different timing. The timing of pebbles is is tricky. So with pebbles, what you want to do, it's kind of hard to explain actually. So the important thing you want to do is you want to stand right against the pebble, not on it, right against it. So you don't want too much space, if any space at all, between Link and the pebble. You want to make sure there's no space, okay? So now that I've done that, you want to make sure that you are again looking up so that you're reducing lag. And then the last thing is the count. The count for this one is a little tricky. It's like a 7.58. So you'll pay attention to the count that I do. You'll notice it's different than my normal jump count. So you see how it wasn't quite on seven. It was a little bit after seven and it wasn't quite to eight yet. So it's a little bit of a kind of middle ground between the two. It's something that you have to just practice over and over and get comfortable with that timing. That's really the only difficult part about pebbles is the jump timing. Now, pebble height launches are a whole different ballgame. 
Pebble height launches are something that, again, Juan T started incorporating into his runs, and people were like, holy shit, this is difficult, you'll never do this, and then I started doing it in my runs, and everyone was like, oh, these are actually really useful. So shout to Juan T. Basically what you do is, as you're walking backwards, you stasis the boulder, hit it a bunch, and then running start, jump on the boulder, and then the same thing. Now, one thing I want you guys to notice about pebble launches is how I grab the pebble. Notice I always grab it from the same place, back here. Every pebble looks exactly the same. A lot of people don't know that, but the pebbles don't have different designs. They're all designed exactly the same way, exactly the same shape. They all kind of look like this little triangle type, uh, you know, arrow. So you've got the flat end right here, and you've got pointy, and you've got pointy right there. So it's pointing to where Link is right now. You notice how the pebble kind of points to where Link is? You want to grab it from this blunt end, okay? Right like that. And then the way that, the reason why you want to do that is because that way that sloped part, you see that sloped part? Here, actually it's sloped this way. Like, that's weird. My camera's like opposite. <laughs> you see it's sloped uh, on the other way. That makes it so it's easier for you to jump onto. So like if I were to stasis it like that, jumping onto this would be a nightmare from this corner. Okay? That's why you want to make sure you grab it from this side. And then you walk backwards, stasis it, and that gives you a really good angle to jump onto. Even at this high, I can get onto it. See? Even when it's like super, super high. You want to make sure... I rolled it over. There we go. You want to make sure you're not stasising it too high. Like, if you stasis it super high, then you're not going to be able to jump on it, or you're going to have a hard time jumping on it. That's pretty okay. Still a little high, but I was able to get on. If it's too low, you're not going to be able to shoot underneath it to, like, point it up. So, like, if you stace it too low, that's pretty too high. Let's try it too low. Like that. It's still kind of off the ground, but there's no way I'm going to be able to shoot up on it. And there have been a lot of situations where I've actually done runs and you can't shoot up on it. So, because what you want to do is you want to be able to do the spin to win, get down, shoot up on it, jump on, and then do your jump on seven. So if it's too low, you're not going to be able to shoot it upwards to point it in the right direction, and you're not going to be able to get the launch. And so it's really just a lot of practice, a lot of repetition, a lot of muscle memory for pebbles. But those are one of the odd objects that you want to be able to get comfortable with in your launching. Because if you're not comfortable with pebbles, then you're really not going to do well when you're practicing runs. Because almost every single run now uses pebbles. Um, another object to get really, really comfortable with are the um, actual boulders, and we I briefly mentioned boulders. Does the pebble launch give more speed than a tree launch? No, it doesn't give more speed or more distance. It just provides an option for when you don't have a tree available, but you've got a rock, boom, there's your launch. The whole point about mastering the different launches in Zelda is so that no matter where you are or what your situation, you have something to launch with. You always have a tool to launch with. And so one of those examples of something is like a boulder. So like we have a couple of boulders here. There are a number of launches that you can do with boulders. You can do height launches. Um, you can do speed launches even with boulders. Speed launches with boulders are actually really fun. Um, I'm going to show you an example of one. But first I'm going to show you a height launch with the boulder. Again, height launching with boulders, pretty straightforward. I'm going to isolate a boulder here. Let's say we want to get up to here. This is actually a launch we do in 100%. So we want to get up to that shrine. We're over here. Climbing is 
an option, but it's slow. So, we just take this boulder, do a quick spin to win. Shoot up. Get on. Up we go. See? Really, really quick alternative for getting up. Really, really simple. Now, let's say we don't want to go high. Let's say we want to go far. Um, that's also another really good alternative. Uh, we can do a speed launch, what's called a speed launch. And what it basically does is it takes Link more far. Because basically, the, the three different kinds of launches are the regular just launch, then there's a height launch, and then there's a speed launch. The difference between them is actually really, really cool. So with a height launch, essentially what you're doing is you're forcing the angle upward so that when you launch, you go a little bit higher than normal. So with like a height launch, you're going from point A to point B. You're still going far. With a rocket launch, you're going from point A to like point B. So you're going really high, but you're not going as far. With just a normal launch, just a straight up launch, you're going from, you know, from point A to point B. You know, you're about the same distance, same, or, or you're a little bit farther of a distance, but you're the same level. You're, you're at the same uh, verticality. The concept behind a speed launch is that you get extra speed and you sacrifice distance. So you're losing distance but you're going extra far. And I'll illustrate that here and show you, is that we're gonna make Link go really, really, really fast. Um, but we're gonna sacrifice some speed by doing it. So I'll show you right here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna isolate this boulder. Quick bomb these two, get these two out of the way. So I'm gonna show you right here. We're gonna wanna get to right there. Okay, that's our destination. Okay, I'm gonna start off with a normal, like a high launch. Let's do a high launch. Okay, why not? See how far that gets us. Got the high launch, we're cruising. We're cruising. Oh, wind's getting a little in our way. Hey, Nora, how's it going? Cruising. Losing speed. Losing speed. We're slow gliding. It looks like we're going to make it. Slow gliding. Slow gliding. Okay, we made it. We got there. But you notice how long that took? So let's try a speed launch and see what the difference is and how fast it takes for us to get there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sacrifice my height. I'm not actually going to go high at all. I'm actually going to lose speed. You'll see Link like start moving downward. And in exchange for moving downward, I'm going to go fast. So you saw I started moving down. Watch this. You see that? You see the difference in the speed and how fast it took for me to get there? So I was able to sacrifice a little bit of uh, height. I actually went down a little bit of height but I was still going full speed by the time I got to my destination. Like I had to stop my paraglider, like I had to put my paraglider away and pull it out again just to stop Link from going too fast. Thanks for the Twitch Prime sub, Zaranosh, appreciate it, man. So 
So those are a couple of the different like launches that you can do again with boulders. Boulders are super useful because again, you can pull off a different number of launches. You can pull them off in different directions as well. Like for instance, let's say I didn't want to go over here. Let's say I didn't want to go that way. Let's say I wanted to go over here to, um, what do you call it? To Kakariko. Let's go to Kakariko, shall we? Same concept. Okay, so that one actually wasn't as fast, but it's still fast enough to take us to where we're at Kakariko now. So just a lot of really, really good uses for, um, what do you call it, for boulders. Um, I recommend you practicing with all the different kinds of objects that you can use. Um, you know, treasure chests included. Treasure chests are really, really good for launching. Um, I'll show you a little bit how to do with treasure chests in a moment. Right here is a good place. So let's go somewhere where we can use a treasure chest to do a launch. Treasure chests are finicky. I used to have a setup where I would do a treasure chest launch by doing a backflip. I've recently discovered a much safer setup where you just do a forward jump on seven. With treasure chests, you just need to make sure that the treasure chest is as flat as possible, you know, if not on a, like a hill or anything, and you're standing right in the middle of it. So we're gonna do this, we're gonna get up here, grab a treasure chest for ourselves to use. Face the treasure chest like that, okay? So you're gonna launch that way. You wanna stand on it so you're right in the middle of it like that, see? So you see, it's even more helpful that treasure chests have those three lines, those, those two lines in the middle to mark the center. You wanna be on that center line, okay? And then you just jump on seven. Um, treasure chests do a lot of unpredictable things so it is still possible to miss the launch even if your setup is perfect. Just, just saying. If you miss the launch... I wasn't even in the right position for that. Um, I'm actually going to save them up. Can you launch off open chests? Yes, they're more unpredictable, and the setup is the same. So that's the good part is that the setup is the same for open treasure chests. Let's get this frenetic bow here. Oh, I can't. I don't have room. Can't even grab the frenetic bow. I don't have room for it. Drop this one. Okay. So now we have an opened treasure chest. Probably should have saved before, but oh well. Okay, in the middle. Oh, see? That one didn't even work. Mm, did I save? I think I did save, cool. So again, that one didn't even work. So treasure chests are like super unpredictable. Sometimes what they'll do is just to explain it, why treasure chests suck so bad. So I've got an eraser here. Imagine if this is the treasure chest. 
depending on your launch and depending on the surface the treasure chest is sitting on, sometimes the treasure chest will do this when it launches, which is what you want. You want it to move in this direction. Sometimes it'll just do this straight. It won't tilt. It won't do anything. It just moves forward. Sometimes those will hit you. Most of the time it'll miss you. Other times the treasure chest will do this. It'll move backwards. If it does that, there's nothing you can possibly do. You're going to miss the treasure chest anyways. So it really just depends on how the treasure chest moves. Sometimes it moves like sideways. Sometimes it does really weird things, but that's the RNG of treasure chests. It's, it has everything to do with the surface it's sitting on. That's one of the reasons why you want to make sure the surface the treasure chest on is as flat as possible. Even if it's as flat as possible, it could still do weird stuff. So that's why treasure chests are just so janky. I missed three of them in my personal best time, just so you have an idea. See that one, I got it. Is there a way I could control it on any surface? No, because the thing that controls it are, again, just the pixels on the ground it's laying on. So there's really no way to predict how it's going to move based on the pixels. Like, again, you see how different this looks like a flat surface, but it really isn't. You know, it's got curves, it's got bumps, it's got you know, all this sort of thing that could cause the chest to behave differently. And it's extremely precise. So unfortunately, there's really not a whole lot you can do to make it constant. Use an ice block to make sure it's nice and flat. You could. Problem with using an ice block is that sometimes ice blocks have problems. The biggest problem with ice blocks is that they're short. I used to do it on an ice block actually, and I stopped because ice blocks are so short. It's a smaller surface, so. See? That one even hit me, but it didn't launch me. So that just goes to show how janky treasure chests are. It must have been like turned at a weird angle so that it hit me, but it didn't hit me in a way that Link would have moved anywhere, or that one could have been lag. But it just goes to show how janky treasure chests are. Dude. And so again, like in this instance, I could use like an ice block. And you can do it, but then you pose the question, okay, uh, let me see here. There's another good one. Like there are a lot of treasure chests around here that you would want to do a treasure launch with and there's no ice block. Like the desert, there's actually two treasure chest launches that I do in the Ingerudo Desert, and there are no ice or water in Gerudo Desert, so it's hard to use an ice block there. So I was just using this area as an example of one treasure chest launch that we do, but there are actually a couple of them that we do. I think I do seven in 100%. And less than half of them have any water around that I could use, so it's a good example though. Um, but yeah, lots of launches that you can do. You can even, even do treasure height launches. Those are fun. You can do a treasure chest height launch. And what that basically is, is it's, it's like, a, it's exactly as it sounds. You do a height launch where you shoot an arrow up on the treasure chest to uh, make it go higher. A lot of you guys are thinking, well, how do you do that? 
There's a little camera manipulation that you can do with bombs. So essentially, I want to shoot an arrow at the treasure chest. I can't. It's too low on the ground. Watch what happens when I stick a bomb behind me. Oh, look at that. I can hit the treasure chest now. How is this possible? It's because the bomb forces the treasure chest, or forces the camera angle, downward more upon Link, so that he can hit things that are lower on the ground. So now, I can hit it, quickly pull out a bomb, oh, that didn't work, burn him at the stake, you can pull out a bomb, shoot an arrow at it, I got up too quickly so I actually missed. Um, and then you can get on you can do a, a treasure chest height launch, which are kind of cool. They're extremely precise. I actually don't even know the timing to treasure chest height launches because I don't use them in 100%. Yeah, I don't know the timing for the jumps. And that was a lot of lag right there. Um, so I wouldn't probably be able to get one right now. Um, but you can test it out. They're really fun. They get you a lot of height, just like a normal height launch would. Um, and you can do it with a treasure chest. So it's cool. So well, yeah, there are a lot of launches that you can do. Um, if you're comfortable with those, or if you feel like you're extra cool, you can even try doing shield clipping. Now shield clipping, is extra fun. Shield clipping is fun because it allows you to skip certain things. In any percent, they use shield clipping to get into shrines without having activated the Shrine of Reser or yeah, without having activated the uh, Plateau Tower. However, in 100%, we use it to bypass major tests of strength. Um, the way it works essentially um, is we found out that you can basically like save the skew of Link. That he gets on when you hit your shield at an angle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit my shield at this angle, just like that. And then since it was at an angle, watch what happens when I do a shield jump and then equip my shield. Whoa, look at that. Look at the angle Link is at. So what he does is he assumes the angle, or in this case it's that way, this way, that way. He assumes the angle that he was on when he did that shield jump, when he when his shield touched that, that, that slope. And so now he is at that slope. So Link isn't where he normally is. He's like temporarily displaced himself to the side. And what we do is we use that displacement to trick the game. So I'm going to show you here, go inside a shrine and notice that it actually goes in the same direction too. It didn't go forward, it didn't go backward. It went the same direction as I had skewed. It's the same direction, same angle, same everything. So I'm going to go into this major test of strength and see if I can actually get it. It'd be funny if I miss it. I'm gonna freeze this enemy here so he doesn't shoot me. Oh, let me get it. Okay, freeze him. I'm gonna come over to this wall. Point myself to the wall. Nah, he got me. All right, so you see, Link isn't at the wall now, okay? He's way out on the side. 
So the game will let him continue to move forward towards the wall. And then when he moves back in position, you see how I've moved back into my normal position? When he moves back into his normal position, his normal position now is inside the wall. So now I'm inside the wall. And I can do that exact same thing to get back out. It's a little bit precise, and every single shrine and every single wall, every single one is different. And so there's a setup for every single different one, but that's essentially the, what do you call it? The science behind it, is that it temporarily displaces Link so he can continue moving forward, even though if he was there normally, it wouldn't let him. And this works with most walls. Like, let me see if I can do it here. Do it like right here. Not gonna let me. Nope, a little bit like it don't let me. Oh well. But you can technically do it with any wall. If you get the timing right and you've got enough skew, you can do it with any wall pretty much. And that allows you to like again just completely get past the guardian. It saves you a lot of time having to fight guardians. It saves you a lot of durability of weapons. Like I didn't use a single weapon besides one shot of an arrow. Actually, I think I used three, but oh well. So it's it's really useful for a lot of different things. You can use it in Trial of the Sword too to completely get past Trial of the Sword. Get out of bounds there. So it's really, really cool. And so notice that I did it on this wall. Why did I do it here? Why couldn't I have done it, you know, here? Or I could have even done it like over here. You know, I could have done it anywhere. The reason why I do it here is because if you look at my map, over here, Link is facing north. We've discovered that if you go into a shrine of a, tr of a test of strength, the test of strength is always facing north. It's interesting. So what we do is we do it on this wall so that if I were to look north, he skews north. Like I'll look to the west and you can see it. Same angle. He always goes that way, which is to the south, which is the opposite angle of what I did, the north. So that way I can clip through the wall. You always want to clip through, or you always want to set your skew the opposite direction of the wall you're trying to clip. How do you clip into unopened shrines like in any percent? Uh, the same way I just showed you, only you do it to like the side of the shrine or on this side or on the back side. It's the same exact concept that I just explained. Only you apply it to the shrine. And so that's shield clipping for you. Um, the next big glitch that was found for um, Breath of the Wild was what's called speed launches. Speed launches, or not speed launches, sorry, super launches. Super launches are interesting. Basically the way that super launches work is you pull your paraglider out on one of the frames that the game lags and since the game is lagging, it's going slower. The game tries to compensate for how slow it's going by making Link go extra fast. So if you pull your paraglider out right on one of the frames that the game is lagging, he'll go extra far and extra fast. And I'll illustrate this in one of the places where it's really easy to get a super launch. Let's head over to Shrine of Resurrection. Uh, we're gonna go to one of these plateau boulders here next to the forest. And the reason why I wanna go to one of these plateau boulders next to the forest is because the forest is a really, really high lag area. So it's gonna be easy for us to get lag here. So we're gonna head over here and we're gonna be using that forest for lag. It's basically the same way as BTB works. No, BTB works differently. So,
with a BTB, you're basically taking advantage of a game mechanic, and we'll get into that later. Um, super launches actually trick the game itself. So we've got a boulder here. What I'm going to do, save first, is I'm going to pull my paraglider out. I'm going to buffer in order to create lag. I'm not going to look at the forest to my left here because that's going to take away the lag frames and load it. We'll do a quick spin to win here. Oh. I still had my physics on from when I did the shield jumps. Let's try that again. So what I'm going to do is, you notice I was looking at the Temple of Time. Um, yeah, Zaranosh. Basically, the super launch is used for like extra laggy areas. It is a little situational. It didn't happen at all. It is a little bit situational, but they are very, very nice because, you know, they get you super, super good speed. I'm actually not even going to try it. I'm going to show you guys what it would look like without it, okay? Whoops. What am I doing? Okay, so... Here's the launch. Let's see how far I can get. Thanks for the 10 bits, Flat Boulders. Appreciate it. Right. I'm just going to keep on slow gliding until Link drops to the ground. So we got here. It's a decent distance. It's a normal launch. It's about normal launch distance. It relies mostly on RNG? No. It's a hard launch, but it doesn't rely on RNG. It's just a super tricky launch to pull off, just because it's a little bit frame perfect. Oh, come on. Did I get it? I think I got it. So this is what the launch looks like when I get a super launch. So you see the game, it's compensating for the lag frame that I pulled the paraglider on, and it increases Link's speed. So he goes even farther. Last launch, I only got to right here. Quite a bit more. If I do it even better, I can get it even farther than that. Let's try it again. That one I kind of fucked up. How many times do I use this in the run? Uh, I think I have three super launches in 100%. Don't quote me on that. I may have taken one out recently for a reroute, but I have about three. This isn't one of them, by the way. I don't think I got that. No. The lag frames were there. I just didn't get it. But yeah, I've got about three of them in my 100% run that I do. They're really fun. Especially when you get it right, because you go really fast. The good thing about them is that...
trying to get that either. How can you tell where the lag frames are? Pay close attention to after I pull out my uh, runes inventory. So watch. I'll show you. You notice that it lagged after I pulled out my, what do you call it, my uh, runes. When I was looking at the forest, you could saw it was like cutting out. It's on one of those flame frames that it's cutting out that I want to grab it. I'll show you again. So it like it like kind of like skips a little bit, it decreases in frame rate. That's not my stream. That's the game. I'll show you one more time. So yeah, you want to make sure that you're pulling the paraglider out on one of those frames. And the way that we do that is when we get on one of those frames, we pause. So like we pause on the frame. And then we pull our paraglider out on that same frame. So that's how you get a super launch. Um, the last trick I want to show you guys is a BTB. And I'll explain to you guys a BTB. Um, so the way that a BTB works is essentially you're trying to cause the game. So the way... Huh. So... When you're in bullet time, I think is a good way to start it. When you're in bullet time, the game slows down by 19 times, okay? However, Link isn't affected by that. You know, he can still pull his bow at normal speed. You know, that's, that's the whole appeal of bullet time, is that you can shoot people in slow-mo. Because Link isn't affected by it, if you hit him, or you, if you have his shield hit something, it bounces him off. So that when you leave bullet time, it keeps that 19 times speed and multiplies link speed by 19 times. Which is an obscene number. But I'll show you what I mean. This is as good a place as any to try BTB. This is one of the BTBs I actually struggle with in my run, so. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shield jump and then I'm gonna pull my bow out to start the um, bullet time. The shield's still gonna be under Link's feet. And then when he hits the Bokoblin, it's gonna bounce him, and I'm going to leave bullet time by pressing Y and doing a spin. So watch what happens. Maybe not. Can you guys see where I did the uh, launch from? Let's drop off here and we'll show you.
So that's the distance I covered. And not only the distance, but the height. You notice how much higher I am than I was before? That's because of the BTV. Yeah, 19 is an obscene number. It really is. Like, just to illustrate how far you can get with one of these, I'll show you. So yeah, that's 19 times speed and distance. It's kind of crazy. I'm gonna start up on the Great Plateau so that we have a little bit more height to us. I'm gonna try and pull it off with more distance. saw me. What's a Cryonis launch? Same as a BTB, but you use a Cryonis um, block instead of a enemy. They're a little bit more tricky to do, though. Yeah, this one's in any percent. This is also in 100%. Fun fact. They do this launch in any percent and in 100%. Only we go in different directions. So just for you guys to get an idea of the sheer height that you can go. Right now I'm even higher than the top of, de of um, what do you call it, Hyrule Castle. I'm higher than most of the mountains. The only mountain that I'm not higher than is Death Mountain. Like, just for you guys to get an idea of how high I am. You see how obscene this launch is. This is way, way higher than you could ever get with any rocket launch, with any height launch, anything like that. You know, it's super, super useful for covering crazy distances. What does the parrying and the club swinging do? It gets me in position and it's for timing. Launch from the top of Death Mountain. Fortunately, I can't launch from the top of Death Mountain because there are no enemies on Death Mountain to launch from. That would be a good idea, though. So let's see if I can get some distance now. Nah, that's height again. But again, like, just how crazy is it? I'm even at level with that top mountain right there. I'm higher than most of the, what do you call them? Most of the towers. Most towers are below me, except maybe that one and the one up over on Death Mountain. A Korok BTB has to exist? No, because you can't receive a boost from Koroks. They don't damage you and you can't damage them. They have no hitbox. The whole point of this is, is a hitbox. You notice I damage the Bokoblin when I do this? That's why it works, is because I'm able to damage the Bokoblin. You want to see an Octorok BTB? So do I. Let me know when you find one. Let's try that angle. 
And so you see, you can take this in different directions depending on how you do it, but it's very precise. Xanthal's messing with a Hinox BTB. Oh, yeah. Hinox BTBs are easy. Because Hinoxes have a much bigger hitbox, and so they're easier to get. Not nearly as precise. But yeah, like I, you can do it on most enemies with hitboxes. You can do it on Lizalfos even. Like here, I'll show you one that I can do on a Lizalfos and not on a Bacoblin. Because the two that I just showed you guys were on Bacoblins. Let me show you one on Lizalfos. Higher for him. That's gonna kill him, isn't it? Oh no, didn't kill him. Cool. Um, let's reload the area. Can you do it on a talus? Maybe. I wouldn't see why though. If you're going to a Talus, you're probably going to try and kill the Talus. Um, you can probably do it on Maluga. Again, I don't know why, but you can. The thing with the bigger enemies is that they are a little bit unpredictable. Zora's domain. But yeah, you see the distance that I got off of that thing. Like I started off at this shrine here at Sheirada. So yeah, it's a pretty awesome distance. It's really cool. Um that pretty much covers all of the launches. So yeah, that's probably the order that I would tell you guys to do stuff in. Do flying machine, not flying machines useless now. Um, so yeah, as you start working up towards the launches, just remember that a lot of people have been practicing this for hours. Like with BTBs, I've probably put in a good, like easy 100 hours into practicing BTBs just to get them right. Um, launches easy two or three hundred hours just grinding launches um, they're super hard like the, none of these tricks that I've shown you here today guys are by any means easy so just be patient with them be patient with yourself um, they're really fun though like that's the thing is they're super super fun that's one of the reasons I love running this game it's just because of how fun all these tricks are um, and so yeah, that, that's my rundown of all of the relevant glitches in uh, Breath of the Wild, or at least most of the relevant glitches anyways, glitches and tricks. Um, now, I'm going to go back to what I was doing before.